回到一百零八年度外交小尖兵的总决赛活动现场。接下来我们要进行的是第二阶段的团体英语即席演讲竞赛了。那我们的选手们呢，都已经在等候室等候喽。那这个阶段呢，我们要特别邀请到的是外交部公众外交协调会的黄义龙科长，为各位抽题，掌声有请黄科长，以及美丽的助手我们的许专员，欢迎您。好，现在有请黄科长为我们秀出这边总共有三颗球，一号、二号跟三号，请将一号球入箱。哦，对，箱子里面没有任何东西，好，放进去。二号球请入箱，三号球请入箱。好，现在呢，摇一摇，有请科长帮我们抽出几号。抽出来的是三号题，好的，那科长可以将球放入箱子当中，我们移驾到三号的这个题目这边来。那有请科长帮我们拿出题目。首先呢，要跟大家介绍一下，这一次我们非常的用心，我们的信封后面呢还有一个蜜蜡的封印，所以是非常扎扎实实、非常经典也非常隆重的方式。好，那有请科长帮我们揭晓题目。请科长先帮我们将题目挂上三号的位置，请您为我们宣读今天的题目。三，青年在台湾的环境外交上可以做什么？请示说明相关具体做法。What can young people do to promote environmental diplomacy? Please give some concrete suggestions. 好的。这个就是我们今天同学们要演讲的题目。那接下来，我们同时要请科长帮我们来揭晓另外两个题号的题目。科长这边有请。那可能麻麻烦您可以站到这一侧来好了。好，麻烦您。好，二号题。青年如何在社群媒体中分辨错假讯息？请是举例说明。How do you identify disinformation on social media? Please explain with examples. 好的，那接下来一号题也要麻烦您了。好，请帮我们挂上去。好，请宣读。一。你认你认为什么是台湾最美的风景？请说明原因。In your opinion, what is Taiwan's most beautiful aspect? Please elaborate. OK， 非常谢谢黄科长，也谢谢许专员，非常谢谢您。好。Okay. 所以三号题就要送到等候室给同学喽。在等候的这段时间呢，我们要邀请平生老师针对刚才第一阶段同学们的表现做一个讲评，让我们热烈的掌声欢迎王雅英教授，欢迎。Right. Um, first of all, we like to say that all of the all of the groups are best, best of the best. Uh, they are doing great. Uh, on the on the uh, pronunciation and also their uh, intonation, they um, they are also doing great on their focus on the theme, and of course that their creativity sparkling. Um, there are only probably um, three things that we would like to remind them. First of all, uh, the performance is like telling a story. If tell a story, that means there needs to be a conflict. Um, so if they are simply presenting information or discussing uh, on the uh, seat, then that's, that would be, uh, the, the dramatic effect would not be so strong. And second thing um, is about language. Although they have great performance on um, pronunciation, intonation, and pause, and et cetera, but then uh, a character, if the character, if the move, body movement or facial expression does not uh, fit for the character, then 
there is a gap. Okay? And the third thing is about the um, uh, fact check. Uh, if the information they present, uh, there is some uh, mistake, then probably they will be a little bit uh, uh, difficult. And well, finally, <laughs> we will say they are all doing great. So thank you. OK, thank you, Professor. 不容易要准确性要生动要自然 讲的是这个cultural sensitivity 那第二个部分呢我想这个content can be expanded a little bit 那我先针对第一个部分来讲一下 就是说因为我们选出来的队伍会代表这个外交部到这个南向国家去宣导还有就是做一些文化交换我想有一些对舞它在服装上面已经都很到位了不过呢我想有一些时候可能对当地的文化还是有点不是很理解那因为我们用的语言是英文那英文有时候这个语言跟文化是连在一起的但是整体来讲我觉得当我们在讲英文
of environmental diplomacy to fight against unpredictable extreme weather phenomena. Now, we will elaborate on this topic in three aspects, including what environmental diplomacy is, how young generation cooperates with other countries, and how it will affect Taiwan's international status. Miki, please. Thanks, Bella. To begin with, I'd like to ask you a question. What is environmental diplomacy? Environmental diplomacy focuses on issues and actions related to environmental security and involves a wide range of factors. The most famous case for environmental diplomacy is the Paris Agreement, which aims to decrease the emission of carbon dioxide. In addition, the smog problem caused by the practice of slash and burn farming in Indonesia was another example. It affected people's health in surrounding countries like Singapore and Malaysia, making it an international issue. With multilateral conferences and negotiations held, ASEAN helped Indonesia distinguish annual wildfires. Indeed, environmental diplomacy enables countries to work hand in hand to solve environmental problems. Next, Sarah will talk about how young generation cooperates with other countries. Sarah, it's your turn. Thanks, Miki. Secondly, Taiwan has put effort in promoting environmental diplomacy in recent years. For instance, Taiwan government invests a lot in the development of the domestic green energy industry, such as solar photovoltaic, wind power, and hydrogen energy in friendly nations. What's more, our government can provide scholarships for our young generation to interact with friendly nations. Also, we young generation can work for friendly nations in green energy companies. Countries like Indonesia and the Philippines have large solar photovoltaic system demand, so Taiwan can not only cooperate with local electric companies, but have a good interaction with local government to achieve the goal, think globally, act locally. By boosting Taiwan as an international foreign energy country, environmental diplomacy provides a bright path for Taiwan's future. Then, Candy will tell us how it will affect Taiwan's international status. Please. Thanks, Sarah. Due to Taiwan's special international status, we have encountered lots of restrictions on the international political stage. However, environmental diplomacy shapes our image of love for the Earth and promotes our friendship with both official and non-official allies. If we young generation can launch cooperative projects to help other countries solve present environmental problems, Taiwan will definitely earn trust, respect, and gratitude. Besides, young people in Taiwan can build on the idea of green chance in the APEC meeting in 2007 to help improve environmental diplomacy. The main goal is to develop green energy, green manufacture, and green products as well. By working cooperatively, environmental diplomacy will be like catalyst for economic diplomacy. Since economic diplomacy will not thrive without economic assistance, economic diplomacy will not be sustainable unless it addresses environmental diplomacy. Then, Bella will wrap up the speech. Thanks, Candy. Based on the benefits we've gained so far, we, gen we young generation in Taiwan should spare no effort on promoting its environmental diplomacy. Thank you.
第二队，请上台。There is no denying the importance of our environment. The environment is what made us, humankind, who we are now. It allows us to prosper. It differentiates us from the lifelessness of the rest of the cold universe. However, despite its great significance, us humans don't seem to treat it that way. We are constantly demanding much more from the environment than it is able to handle, causing further degradation and instability causing further degradation and instability and worsening the already present issues in the environment. Over the past few years, these, these problems have grown into more than just mere issues we can put on the side where we aim for economic growth. They have, grown, they have essentially grown into crises which we must handle at once. However, these crises are caused by all humankind and they cannot be tackled by forces of nations apart. This is, where, this is where environmental diplomacy comes to play. As Taiwanese youth, we can also help on environmental diplomacy in Taiwan by understanding the topic and providing our creative and innovative ideas. As we face the impending threats of global climate change, we must invest in sustainable green technologies or increase our use on them. However, these green technologies are not perfect. Take Taiwan for instance. The Taiwanese government has developed in wind power for a long time. The wind power seems very nice. It makes no air pollution, and it doesn't need to burn anything to start. But not everyone likes the wind power. According to a survey, residents who live beside the wind turbines have the noise that wind turbines make. And in fact, we don't know wh whether this noise is harmful to people or not. That is why environmental policy is so important. By creative ideas of young Taiwanese and cooperate with the government, we can set up these green technologies more secured and more efficiently. Another global environmental issue is the pollution of plastic. Just take a minuscule country like Taiwan into account. Tanshui River in northern Taiwan alone dumps 14,700 tons of plastic into the Pacific annually. Think about how severe the pollution has become when each and every nation across the globe is producing plastic waste. Every year, millions of tons of plastic enter the oceans, of which the majority comes from rivers. An international organization called the Ocean Cleanup is intending to rid the ocean of plastic. Their objective is to have 90% of the pollution cleaned up via ocean garbage patches. The garbage patches create vortexes of circulating currents, which congest and capture plastic floating on the surface of the oceans. The young people of Taiwan are also once equipped with innovative minds. The Taiwanese are capable of coming up with ideas just as innovative as the one I mentioned above. <coughs> Possessing the ability, we as young people in Taiwan should always try to contribute efforts and take part in facing the crisis shared among nations by promoting our own ideas. After all, if we as inhabitants on Earth don't start combining forces, the pollution of plastic will increasingly impact our health our economy, and our ecosystems. Climate change is an ongoing issue, and it is up to us to embrace the advances in technology. Climate change is an ongoing issue, and it is one we must deal with with utmost seriousness. Environmental security cannot be achieved by efforts of nation states working alone. Thus, environmental diplomacy is of paramount importance in this day and age. Ladies, gentlemen, honorable judges, and fellow diplomats, Taiwan, as a member of global society, must not exclude itself from this topic. Taiwan has taken great measures to improve environmental sustainability and contributed plenty to the global efforts to combat climate change. As I mentioned above, Taiwan can partner up with international tech firms to make Taiwan known to the world. Because Taiwan wields sufficient influence, or we can work on regional issues with our regional friends to consolidate the regional bonds. Together with other nations, we will not only be able to consolidate the re issues, to consolidate issues, we, will, we can tr use our bonds to consolidate the world. Thank you.
第三队请上台。Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. United Nations Security General Antonio Guterres said the sustainability trend has left the station. Get on board or get left behind. Urging the world to rally behind the landmark Paris Agreement. Taiwan government tries to get on board and help in global effects to combat climate change. However, Due to political constraints, Taiwan can only attend COP sections as an NGO observer. Uh, our government is seeking means for participation to, in a UNFCCC to expand the contributions to combating climate change. In view of the situation, what can young people help to fulfill the goals? In fact, with their energy and creativity, Young people are the key resource to achieving the sustainable development goals and bring about transformations towards a better future for mankind and the environment. To minimize the effect of climate change, we, young people, should engage in meaningful ways at a time. Fortunately, there is evidence that around the world, young people are taking the lead to promote the environmental diplomacy. We, Taiwanese youngsters, may learn, share, and adopt their experiences. Next, Samuel will elaborate more about these young actions. By organizing school walkouts, public protests, and social media campaigns, young people can draw on the world's attention to global warming in ways that decades of studies could not. Take Greta Thunberg, for example, the 16-year-old girl from Sweden spark the global movement of students, demanding the government to take greater action to combat climate change. Now, millions are marching to show their support. Taiwanese protesters also joined the global climate strike with performance art. This September, many youth marched barefoot from Taipei Ximending to a legislative yuan in an art performance that highlighted the impact of climate change and how their future will be bleak if the carbon emissions are not reduced. Those climate strike organizers pointed out the need for Taiwan to transition toward renewable energy and shift away from fossil fuels. They suggested Taiwan could set an example in Asian values by pushing renewable energy initiatives. The young activists can publicize what they have done on social media and showcase the world that Taiwan is partaking in global efforts to combat climate change. On top of public protests and online campaigns, we could also spread the messages offline. Public forums such as the Voices of the Youths also allows us to express our views. Through these dedicated platforms, we can advocate the, or the original and inspiring insights on the issues that matters to us. In Taiwan, the 2019 Global Youth Trend Forums was held in November this year. A total of 350 youths from Taiwan and 25 other countries on the five continents participated in the gathering and exchanges, discussing on the topics that respectively correspond to the Sustainable Development Goals of the SDGs. These 350 youth delegations shared the current situations and the problems of their own countries and proposed the original action plans and hope of sparking ideas through international exchanges. Besides the above-mentioned platforms where we can advocate and express our ideas, young people can partake in environment-related contests worldwide to voice their concerns. For example, here in Taiwan, an International Environment and Scientific Project Olympiad, UNESPO. Outstanding Taiwanese young innovators proudly outshine other competitors to demonstrate our growing capacity to tackling environmental challenges. Whether through education, technology, science, or laws, we young people far and wide should tap into the skills to speak up for climate actions. Here in Taiwan, given the political and environmental impact intensifies over time. Far from being a passive victim, 
we young people should endeavor to redouble the efforts to help Taiwan government as well as the whole world to get on the sustainability train. Let's get on board and make the world a, a better, better place. place. Thank, Thank you. you. A Swedish teenage girl, Breda Thunberg, has become well known to the world for what she has done to arouse people's awareness of climate change. The campaigning of this teen climate activist has gained international recognition. Today, we will further discuss what we teenagers can do on environmental diplomacy. Fast fashion is a phenomenon in the modern world. It brings inexpensive styles to the public while doing damage to our environment at the same time. While we are enjoying the conveniences that fast fashion has brought, many people in some undeveloped regions aren't even able to have a pair of shoes to protect them from deadly food diseases. In recent years, a program used shoes save lives, launched by some Taiwanese, have not only contributed to solving the problems caused by fast fashion, but has also helped those who are in tough environment. Unwanted shoes and clothes are collected and sent to some African countries. With those shoes, people there no longer have to worry about deadly food diseases. Apart from this, the reuse of clothes will further help the earth. This warm-hearted program running between different countries not only brings protection and convenience to the disadvantaged, but also helps protect the environment. It is a simple way for teenagers like us to take part in environmental diplomacy. About 15% of global emissions come from animal products. From animals like cows, chickens, and pigs produce large amounts of methane gas and carbon dioxide. They also require pastures that will cause soil damage. According to a recent United Nations report on climate change, eating less meat and using less land for food production is the best way to solve the problem. In 2008, some schools in Taiwan responded to the Meatless Monday activity. With the help of the government, more than 2,000 schools in Taiwan joined by the end of 2012, and the numbers are still rising. In addition to a vegetarian day each week, smaller carbon footprint ingredients and local produce are used preferentially. Other countries like the USA and Belgium also supported the eating less meat activity. Helen Keller once said, alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. By working together consistently, we can definitely make the world a better place. We can help our environment and people around the globe from various aspects. Take a Taiwanese woman, Ling Nianci, for example. After realizing women in Nepal couldn't afford clean sanitary pads during their menstrual period, she decided to establish a workshop in which she taught women there to make reusable and affordable clothes sanitary pads. The clothes pads not only help the women there, but also provides locals with job opportunities. What's more, compared with disposable sanitary pads, the clothes pad is much more friendly to our environment. This year, a girls' high school has taught its students to make clothes sanitary pads in one of their courses. They sent the pads they had made to women in Africa, who suffered the same plight as women in Nepal. In doing things like these, we can not only improve our diplomatic relations with other countries, but also make our environment better. 
as long as we pay more attention to environmental problems and take some active actions. We, teenagers, can also make some contributions to the world, just like Greta Thunberg. Let's do our best to save the Earth and make the world a better place. This is the end of our speech. Thank, Thank you. you. Taiwan may be small, but it has left a big impression on the global stage. Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. A few weeks ago, at a Malaysia TEDx activity, a float drink bottle solved my problems with the plastic waste generated by drinking my favorite bubble tea. It used a uniquely designed shape to replace the typical one-time used straws and cups. Later, I discovered that this cup had been invented by Taiwanese teenagers. Not only did this creative solution to plastic waste reveal our youth's passion for protecting the Earth, but it also helped to develop our environmental diplomacy, allowing Taiwan to shine on the global stage. Queen, can you tell us more? Absolutely, Shayna. Climate change, rising sea levels, and the seas of plastic straws found in turtle stomachs have undoubtedly drawn the whole world's attention to the urgent environmental issues. Environmental diplomacy encouraging international action on environmental protection has become a necessary tool to help save the environment. As Xi and I mentioned, teenagers like us can also make valuable contributions to this end. Our youth's innovation, creativity, and passion can be a powerful force for promoting environmental diplomacy. Young people in Taiwan have created some shining examples of eco-friendly solutions. With these successful models, Taiwanese youth have become more persuasive in international settings, speaking out for Taiwan and the Earth. Next, I would like to welcome my teammates, Mandy and Gary, to introduce how the young people of Taiwan market our country in a green way. Mandy, the floor is yours. Thank you, Queen. Since the global awareness of the importance of sustainability has risen, Taiwanese youths are devoting themselves to practicing it. For example, a Taiwanese student named Wang Siying figured out a solution to the garbage problem in the Philippines, along with other students from Southeast Asia. They invented seaweed-based packaging that replaced plastic with seaweed reducing environmental issues caused by plastic containers. This idea was even noticed by an Indonesian company, which led to an ongoing collaboration. Another example refers back what Shiena just mentioned, flow drink bottle. Designed by Taiwanese youths, this kind of bottle separates bubble from milk tea with filters. It helps people reduce their use of disposable straws and plastic cups while they enjoy drinks with solid ingredients. Now, both seaweed-based packaging and flow drink bottle are for sale all over the world, allowing people to protect their own environments with products from Taiwan. Gary, how about you? Sure, Mandy. Now that we possess the ability to produce such responsible products, we should exchange our ideas with friends around the world. Here are two examples. To begin with, 10 senior high school students in Taiwan were invited to Israel earlier this year to attend the International Congress for Environmental Leadership. They exchanged their ideas on sustainable cities with friends from the other five countries and made an introductory video 
about Taiwan's efforts in sustainable development, which ended up being used as an opening video for the event. Second, we have the Taiwan Youth Climate Coalition, founded by students from Tsinghua University. After attending the COP16 event in Mexico, they decided to set up a platform for people worldwide to provide them with information about environmental issues. The two instances we've mentioned help to publicize Taiwan's devotion and determination to protect the environment. Xiena, what's our conclusion? Thank you, Timaze. The Nobel Literature Prize winner Ernest Hemingway once said, the earth is a fine place and worth fighting for. Only through environmental diplomatic cooperation, all the world can combat environmental problems together. Wang Ziying's plan and a flow drink bottle demonstrate our youth's passion for protecting the earth, and Taiwanese teenagers' attendance at international conferences helps to garner the world's attention for Taiwan's green diplomacy. With these efforts, we Taiwanese teenagers can show the world our determination to fight for the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, thank, thank you. you. In 2015, the United Nations announced 17 Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, for 2030. Among these goals, there are several targets addressing the most pressing global issues. Among them, many of them address the current environmental crisis we are facing right now. Issues such as marine conservation, loss of biodiversity, air pollution, and greenhouse gas emissions are all worrying subjects for the global community. Today, we would like to shed light on how Taiwanese youth can use social media to help promote awareness in the locals, as well as help Taiwan move towards a better future where we adhere to international standards. Marine conservation is one of the world's most pressing issues. The United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 14 aims to conserve and sustainably use the oceans, seas, and marine resources for sustainable development. Taiwan has a huge responsibility our land development and heavy industries have damaged coastal areas, and our plastic consumption also endangers marine species. On Facebook, I found a youth organization called Lin Yuan Dream Factory. It, is, it holds lots of beach cleanup activities every year, and it teaches youth about reducing personal plastic consumption. It inspires me that youth can also do something to the, environmental, to the environment. So we can cooperate with these kind of powerful organizations to hold international activities to make everyone in the world can join. Marine conservation is really an important problem in the world. And we youth can do our best to solve this problem. United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 15 aims to conserve and sustainably use terrestrial ecosystem to ensure the persistence of biodiversity and prevent land degradation. Through this goal, you can see loss of terrestrial biodiversity is a serious international environmental crisis Taiwan should face. One of the reasons is to prevent invasive species from, from doing harm to our local species. For example, Yellow crazy ant from Africa through the world trade was introduced to Na Canting National Park 
from 2015 to 2017, experts have discovered that the population of terrestrial crab in Canton National Park has fallen by a third. And the main reason has been considered the yellow crazy ant. To solve this serious issue, we, Taiwanese youth, could use social media like Instagram, and we could create an account on social media that we could post stories, facts, pictures about how these invasive species do harm to our local species. This way, we could draw attention from the world to, to prevent invasive species from doing harm to our local species. Air pollution, especially greenhouse gas emission, is the most, ur most, the most urgent environmental issue facing Taiwan and many parts of the world. The United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 13 aims to take urgent action to combat climate change and its impact. The main source of greenhouse gas emission is coal-fired power plant and personal vehicles. Our government incentivizes people to use U-Bike more by providing their service at an extremely low cost or for free. We youth have the tool to promote environmental diplomacy. Rather than taking personal vehicle, we can ride bikes more. We can promote bike riding on Facebook. Within the platform, messages spread extremely quickly. By achieving the sustainable development goals of the United Nations, we believe we can gain our recognition by doing this. By utilizing social media in an age of rapid technological development, we believe that we as Taiwanese youth have the ability to help raise local awareness of important environmental issues. In the end, we only have one home, one planet Earth, and it is our ability and responsibility to take care of it and protect it. Thank you. Environmental diplomacy serves a vital role in the 21st century. It tackles issues and actions related to our environment, such as use of natural resources and pollution issues. Good afternoon, honorable judges. The primary subject matter for Taiwan's environmental diplomacy relates with the issue that has been affecting our world for decades, climate change. Since the Industrial Revolution, various nations have made use of fossil fuels. The greenhouse gases that they have created have emitted into the air, faltering our atmosphere. This interrupts many aspects of our globe, including temperature change and the rise of sea levels. What can young people do to promote environmental diplomacy? As teenagers, we can illustrate our willingness to participate. What do you think, my teammates? You're right, Will. As a teenager, it is our duty to participate, implement, and promote the spirit of environmental diplomacy for our country, and ultimately, the world. How exactly do we achieve this? Firstly, we can begin by reading and watching the news and slowly work our ways into the topic and conduct independent research on the subjects. Then we can start by taking action. This can come into two forms, domestic promotion and cross-border implementation. By performing through these directions, we, the young generations, can become the key to elevate global environmental status to a higher level. Indeed, Angelina. 
Young people like me are the backbone of the nation. What we think and do is one of the key elements of making changes to the future. The participation of youth can range from forming basic habits, such as reducing the usage of electronics or taking public transportation, to enrolling in non-governmental organizations such as the Youth Councils or Modern United Nations. In the past two years, more and more high schools are beginning to participate in the Modern UN. In these conferences, adolescents are encouraged to engage in discussions on subjects such as economics and politics. Environmental topics are also a trend this year due to the increased attention on climate change. Through the stimulation provided by these conferences, young people obtain the opportunity to reflect on global issues and may then produce new and effective solutions. Absolutely, Philomena. It is not only important that we promote awareness of the environment in Taiwan, but also necessary that we implement these thoughts and skills to the outside world. There are many ways that a teenager can participate in environmental diplomacy. Being a youth ambassador is one of these methods. By diving into the programs that offer invaluable lessons, such as meeting face-to-face -face with diplomats or business leaders, teenagers can acquire skills of international etiquette, broaden our horizons, and even enhance bilateral communication between foreign countries and Taiwan. According to the plan of implementation adopted at the World Summit on Sustainable Development, the promotion, support, and mobilization of youth organizations and programs will be critical to achieving the Millennium Development Goal to ensure environmental sustainability. Indeed, the participation of youth is of great significance. It is our responsibility to protect and maintain the environment. It is our job to care for and take part in environmental projects. With our willingness to promote these acts, we can achieve sustainable development for the environment and bring revolution to the world. And most importantly, to, to make, make the, the world, world a better, better place. place. Thank, Thank you. you. The former Pope, John Paul II, said to the public that the earth will not continue to offer its harvest, except with faithful stewardship. We cannot say we love the land and take steps to destroy it by use by future generations. Since we notice the Mother Earth is poisoned, the action we've taken so far is still not enough. Although we have heard non-government organizations that assemble people to clean the beaches and the mountains, we still need nations which are more powerful than organizations to be responsible to this issue. Now, trash pollution is a problem that is commonly known in this modern society. It is killing our world. For example, the, Ameri the United States of America produces about 230 million trash per, per year. That's about 4.6 pounds of trash per person per day, and 
the situation like this can be considered even more worse in certain countries, such as India. Now that's a lot of damage, and we don't need any more of that. There's a popular concept that is popular with the modern society these days, turning waste into new product. Now let's take a look at the FIFA World Cup jerseys a few years back. Those were manufactured by Taiwan. They were made by using recycled plastic bottles and turning them into comfortable and stylish football jerseys. Now that's kind of cool, isn't it? So what can teenagers such as ourselves do? We can use the very influential social media to achieve our goal. Take pictures of ourselves wearing this product tell the, and share them onto social media. Tell the world, hey, Taiwan made this. We did this. So why not bring your waste over to Taiwan where we have the ability and the technical know-how to turn it into something new and innovative. Now, there's a lot of good cause in the world right now, but it's hard sometimes to get motivated when you don't have a clear objective. Now, the Japanese might have an answer for that. In recent years, a Japanese anime studio created a fictional girl called Earth Jump. And it's a girl that's uh, with blue and green hair that's supposed to be look like planet Earth, where wearing a white shirt with a NASA logo on it. And there's a lot of fan-made pictures with this fictional character, and one of them is on the, on the front where this girl kind of bleeds, bleeding and with bandages, just like the planet Earth right now, with the below a man planting trees with haste. There's another picture with men planting trees, uh, men recycling as well. Now, with this, such a t uh, with anime, is such a big thing in teenage culture right now, I think this is the best place to start to get awareness with teenagers. In December 2019, which is this month, a Scottish whale research group found out that inside of a dead sperm whale that was washed up on the local beach have more than 220 pounds of tangled netting, ropes, plastics, and other trash inside its stomach. If we could put the points we mentioned earlier into actual work, then we could stop this phenomenon from ever happening again. In Leonardo DiCaprio's most recent documentary about the damages we have caused to the Earth, an expert said, imagine the space as the ocean and the Earth as the boat. If the boat sinks, then the society will be dead. There's a choice we're making. If we chose correctly and carefully, then we will be saving our own lives. Actions speak louder than words. Why don't we just get into actions right now? Oh. Thank, Thank you, you for listening. listening. This is not a fiction. When I'm giving this talk, about 4 million tons of ice on Earth is melting every minute, and the speed is even accelerating. Environmental issues cross national boundaries and are affecting all peoples. Greater cooperation among nations is thus necessary, which leads to the environmental diplomacy. In the past few decades, there appeared many multilateral negotiations addressing the new environmental issues, such as Kyoto Protocol. By practicing the environmental diplomacy, Taiwanese youth can not only deal with the environmental problems, 
but also solve our diplomatic predicament. To achieve this goal, there are three aspects that Taiwanese youth can strive with our young fellows. First, respond to global climate change. Second, decrease air pollution. And third, reduce ocean waste. So now, let's first start from responding to global climate change. For the first aspect, Taiwan can respond to climate change with other countries by reducing greenhouse gas emissions or participating in international conventions such as the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, or UNFCCC. Taiwan possesses advanced technology such as solar energy and LED industry, so we can further seek to build bilateral relationships with our partner countries, assisting them on reducing carbon emissions, preventing and rebuilding after natural disasters. For example, Taiwan has built an early warning system for extreme climate events and earthquakes in the Solomon Islands. The collected data can also help Solomon Islands issue dengue fever alerts, which has drawn global attention. With continuous endeavors, Taiwan has proven itself a constructive partner in combating global climate change. Besides responding to climate change, reducing air pollution is another aspect for Taiwan to practice environmental diplomacy. According to WHO, more than 4 million people die early because of outdoor air pollution each year. In recent years, Taiwan has collaborated with neighboring countries to work toward a common solution under new southbound policy. For example, this summer, the SSEA Air Annual Meeting was held in Taipei. In this meeting, 30 government officials and experts in the field could exchange their experiences in air pollution control. Taiwan has significant results in air quality control in the past 25 years to share with, and seeks future cooperation with other Asian countries such as the implementation of the Southeastern Asian Quality Management Platform. By providing technical assistance and implementation experiences, Taiwan aims high to achieve regional air quality advancement. The third aspect is decreasing ocean plastic pollution. Marine conservation has always been a critical environmental issue in East Asia. Ocean plastic pollution not only threatens regional development marine ecosystem, but also causes harm to human health. With the similar experience of dealing with environmental issues caused by rapid economic development, Taiwan can be source of ins inspiration to nations in the Asian Pacific region. In just 25 years, Taiwan had built up one of the mo world's most efficient recycling system. With a, with a recycling rate up to 60%, one of the highest in the world last year. Also, Taiwan is, to the goal, is on the way to the goal of banning single-use plastic bags and utensils by 2030. With wide-ranging international cooperation, especially with Southeastern Asia, Taiwan is well equipped to become a technical center, training center, and research center to this global issue. When helping other countries with their envir environmental issues, we could also gain friends and create opportunities toward green industries. As Bob Proctor put it, cooperation is always more powerful than competition. By sincerely collaborating with our young fellows in responding to global climate change, re decreasing air pollution, and reducing ocean waste, Taiwan needs youth will be able to conduct the environmental diplomacy. Like the slogan showing Taiwan's willingness to make global efforts, we can be proud to say, for global environmental issues, Taiwan can help.
第十队，请上台。I'm sorry, everyone, but the drama segment was this morning. This afternoon, we're just sticking to the speech. My name is Charlie. Anna, Sharon, and Ruby. Good afternoon, everyone. Which of the environmental problems you think is the most serious one? Well, I tell you now, they are all serious. And there are so many environmental problems that is life-threatening. And also, we're confronted with these days that it is impossible, impossible for us to mention every one of them. And I can assume, if we don't take any action to solve this problem, we are going to die. Not just us, but our small but beautiful island. Later, Sharon is going to talk about water pollution, but now. Please listen to Anna as she explains her take on this very important issue. Thanks, Charlie. I couldn't agree with you more. This is such an important issue that affects all of us. Allow me to explain. The problems that we are all facing today is global warming and air pollution. And what can we young people do to solve these problems? First, I think we can use more transportations. More public transportations, in order to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions. And second, we can also use more green energy, such as wind and solar, and this way to stop burning coal to make electricity. And third, we can also use more electric vehicles, such as electric scooters, and in this way to. Reduce the carbon dioxide emissions. Now, my very intelligent friend Sharon is going to outline some other issues which carry equal, if not greater, importance. Well, I totally agree with Anna that those issues are very important, but very intelligent.、Um, have you ever watched the documentary、um, Beyond Beauty, Taiwan from Above? If you have, then you must have realized how serious the water pollution is. The chemicals in the river will flow in the ocean and eventually come back to human bodies, and it's apparently harmful. From my perspective, Taiwanese youngsters can establish an international non-governmental organizations in order to promote the authorities. To regulate the emissions of of chemicals, and as for plastic pollution,、um, I think, as a part of the young generation, we should all stop using plastic actively. And now, in this spirit of Christmas, Ruby is going to wrap up this speech for all of us. Thanks, Sharon, and don't be so humble. What you have pointed out is definitely something we must pay close attention to. And now, I'm going to provide another way to promote environmental diplomacy: giving speeches abroad. By doing this, we can inform people from other countries the importance of sustainable development. So now, let's quickly go over these points that Anna and Sharon have mentioned. Anna mentioned. Global warming and air pollution. Sharon talked about establishing NGOs and plastic pollutions. So everybody, as my friend Sharon mentioned earlier, I'll wrap this up by asking you all: Is convenience really more important than saving our future generation? We've already made mistakes. The issue we have mentioned today are the result of our own doing. Therefore, we, as Taiwanese youngsters, have to work together to correct this before it is too late. Thank, Thank you. you.
，第十一队请上台。计时开始。Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As climate change worsens, governments around the world are eager to seek methods to alleviate it. Under these circumstances, environmental diplomacy has become the top priority for many countries. Environmental diplomacy mainly focuses on the conflict between economic development and environmental security. Most countries around the world are involved in this issue and working to balance them. Several organizations were founded to ease tension and to look for solutions that get the best economic outcome with the least ecological cost. For example, the United Nations Environment Program, or UNEP, promotes environmentally sustainable development within the United Nations system and strives to combat environmental issues. Next. Rosa will give us an example of the conflict and the possible solutions. Thank you, Joyce. To begin with, a perfect example of how economic and environmental security are related is a case of rare earth minerals. They are required for many of our electronic devices. However, mining for and extracting them is devastating to the environment. In China, mining these materials causes severe air quality issues. The price China is paying for its environmental security is a catalyst for the economic development in other countries. This is an example where economic development and, and, and environmental security work against each other. The UNEP offered a platform for nations to share information and be a transparent tool for participating members to work cooperatively for environmental security and economic diplomacy as well. Next, Anderson will tell you the other, the other situation deal with environmental diplomacy. Thank you, Rosa. Another issue environmental diplomacy addresses is preventing and recovering from environmental crisis. It is a fact that the Earth has been facing severe climate changes in recent years. The Marshall Islands are sadly a great example. This tiny nation in the middle of the Pacific Ocean faces a destructive threat to its very existence, rising sea levels, which is mainly caused by global warming. During the 2014 United Nations Climate Summit, a young Marshallist poet, Kathy, presented a poem telling them to tell the world of their crisis. It successfully brought the world's attention. Then, later during the negotiations for the Paris Climate Accord in 2016. Tony DeBrun, the former foreign minister of Marshall and the Pacific Nations climate ambassador, helped to secure a global commitment to limit Earth warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Therefore, actions for environmental crisis and protection are also vital. So, Grace, how can teenagers do to protect our environment? Thank you, Anderson. For teenagers, I think that the example of the 25-year-old inventor, Boyan Slat, could serve as a role model for every one of us. As a Dutch high school student at age 16, in 2011, Slat devoted a deeper investigation into ocean plastic pollution in a project and later came up with an idea. In 2012, he presented his idea on TED and soon became famous because of his dedication to the environment. In 2013, SLAT founded the Ocean Cleanup, whose mission is to develop advanced technologies to clean up the debris from the Great Pacific Patch. The Ocean Cleanup System, or System 001, works as a big river chain on the sea surface to, to collect floating waste. After years of trial and error, it was reported that the ocean cleanup system has successfully collected plastic this past October. Slat's idea and devotion to protecting the environment is really a great example for us teenagers. Lastly, George will wrap it up for us. Thank you, Grace. 
Environmental diplomacy seems like a pretty far stretch for teenagers. But in every instance that we have talked about, it was just one person who made a difference. We just need to look around and take actions, from reducing trash in daily life to joining coastal cleanup. Every single one of us can stretch toward assisting the environment. Collecting information and voicing out opinions on social media. Apart from nations and organizations, we, as individual single beings, are responsible for the world. The, the time, time to act is now. Thank you. When it comes to environmental change, what flashes through your mind? Do you think it's inevitable that some people will be disproportionately affected by global warming, rising sea levels, and catastrophic weather events? Do you believe that by cooperating with each other, we can make a difference to the world? Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Time is ticking. Are we moving? It's not just a slogan. It is the mission statement of TWYCC, Taiwan Youth Climate Coalition. It's a public appeal to actively protect our environment. As Taiwanese, what can the young generation do to advocate environmental diplomacy? Now, let's invite my teammate Yugu to elaborate. Thank you, Thomas. This summer, I participated in the Student Conservation Leadership Summit in San Diego with high school students from different countries. Besides visiting the institutes and organizations related to environmental protection, we attended a series of workshops and seminars where we discussed environmental issues like coastal pollution, overfishing, and extreme weather. We even analyzed the water pollution in the Tijuana River with a native hydraulic engineer and came up with a possible solution. Upon our return to Taiwan, we organized a one-day workshop at Taichung Grove Senior High School and shared our observations and solutions with teachers and students nationwide. This precious experience indeed offered me a great chance to learn more about environmental issues. And most importantly, show others how we young students can contribute to the international community. What do you think, Evelyn? Thank you, Yugu. I can't agree with you more. I believe another way to promote environmental diplomacy is through cross-country conferences. This year, my class had a video conference with an American student club called Heal the Bay. We did this video conference to gain insight into how students of other countries do to protect the environment. In the beginning of the video conference, they introduced us to their main goal, coastal conservation and rehabilitation. They even advocated sustainable seafood which is a way of fishing with minimal impact on the marine environment, since we know that overfishing leads to depletion of ocean resources. And in return, we introduce them to a non-plastic school life by banning the usage of plastic utensils in our school. Everyone can help in promoting environmental diplomacy. We proved that with our passion and determination, we can encourage more people to protect the environment and go green together. What do you think, Jingjing? Thank you, Evelyn. That's a great point. I believe we can successfully promote Taiwan's environmental diplomacy by participating in international organizations. For example, a former teen diplomatic envoy from this contest a few years ago, Rebecca Chen, represented TWYCC at COP22 in Morocco. During the council, she held workshops, seminars, and even flash mobs to raise people's awareness 
and exchange ideas with youth from other countries on the issue of climate change. Countries like Vietnam, India, and even Australia have seen firsthand the detrimental effects of global warming. Though Taiwan is currently not a member of the UN, through TWYCC, we young people still endeavor to speak for Taiwan on the United Nations podium, affirming our global vision. By being an active participant in international organizations, I believe we can successfully promote Taiwan's environmental diplomacy. Back to you, Thomas. Thank you, Jinting. As super typhoon hit Japan, fires devour Amazon rainforests, and the toxic smog chokes India. We should stand up and take action to protect our environment. By sharing what I've learned in the environmental summits, by holding cross-country conferences, and by voicing for Taiwan in the International Climate Convention, we can definitely enhance our environmental diplomacy. Time is ticking. Are we moving? It's more than a slogan. It is a model for all the young people to keep in mind and make the world a better place. Ladies and gentlemen, time is ticking. We are moving! Thank you. The environment is where we all meet, where we all have a mutual interest. It is the one thing all of us share, said Lady Bird Johnson. With the rapid development of society, environmental issues have been arousing people's interest and awareness. So much so that environmental diplomacy is now a significant area in the field of international relations. Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to share about what young people can do to promote environmental diplomacy. Let's hear from Ethan to elaborate further. Environmental diplomacy caught my eye and captured my interest when our teacher Hugo built a great tower out of recycled oyster shell wood. It was an Isin landmark in Tainan known as the Sunset Tower or Hugo 101 in Ampi Moon Bay. It stands as a famous tourist attraction and has successfully raised the youth awareness of the value of recycling, art, and protecting the environment. It no longer stands, but its beautiful story made an impact on me. This has in turn provided me, as a Taiwanese youth, with the inspiration for holding an environmental art festival, inviting people from all over the world using reclaimed waste to create appealing artworks. Recycling waste material into something beneficial is alluring to people of all types of culture. I believe through holding an environmental art festival, environmental diplomacy would thoroughly captivate people's attention. What about you, Sammy? Ever since plastic started to spread around the world, it has become an indispensable staple of our life. Taiwan has been referred to as Plastic Kingdom, especially our famous tea shop culture. Recently, EPA Ban on single use of plastic straw is set to go into force on July 1, 2019. Hence, many young Taiwanese entrepreneurs have created straws which are made from biodegradable sustenance, such as natural bamboo fiber, sugarcane fiber, rice hulls, and waste tea leaves. And one of them has become a supplier of Starbucks and Apple Company, and so on. 
in order to promote environmental diplomacy, what I think Taiwanese youth should create more eco-friendly products, just like biodegradable straws. Because through these kinds of ways, we can not only achieve the goal of protecting the environment, but bridge us to connect with other countries. By creating eco-friendly products on the global markets, we can definitely make a greater impact on the international stage. Tell us more, Adeline. Taiwan has been putting great effort in promoting environmental diplomacy through various ways. For example, the American Institute in Taiwan and the Taichung City government have together established the Global Environmental Education Partnership Asia Pacific Regional Center. The organization aims to advocate environmental diplomacy through international bilateral cooperation. During the event, Taiwanese youth and United States youth share expertise on a wide range of topics, including air pollution, mercury monitoring, electronic waste management, and green energy. Taiwan's success in these areas has attracted many other countries to cooperate with us. I believe by attending these kinds of constructive organizations, Taiwanese youth will be able to promote environmental diplomacy through international cooperation more effectively. I'll hand it back to you, Jane. As you just heard, holding green art festivals, creating eco-friendly products for the global market, and attending international environmental activities are no doubt three significant ways for young people to promote environmental diplomacy. As Taiwanese youth, we should strive to make contributions to the environment we live in, which we in turn can endeavor to ensure Taiwan stays on the right path and together we can pave the road to a more harmonious future. Thank you. Good afternoon, judges and contestants. Wendell Berry once said, the earth is what we all have in common. Nowadays, the top priority for our international leaders is to protect the environment. Taiwan is deeply concerned about this issue and has always been willing to contribute to a sustainable environment on a global scale. Taiwan has made great efforts to promote our environmental diplomacy through other aspects. However, we believe that young people can also help contribute to our environmental diplomacy by taking practical action and raising awareness. I'll let my teammates elaborate more. Jade? Thank you, Aiden. Before we go into the specific youth examples, Let's see, let's see how adults can solve environmental issues because the youth can look up to the adults as role models. As we all know, the world leaders always address issues and actions related to environmental security that includes energy, nature, technology, climate change, biodiversity, and more. The environment is borderless and continues to be addressed at a multilateral level. In this context, the environmental diplomacy is the most valuable activity in international relations and arena, which is exactly why the UNFCCC enters into force. The UNFCCC's objective is to stabilize the greenhouse gas concentration to better reduce the human impact on climate. As a key observer of the UNFCCC, Taiwan cares about the environment. Taiwan's contribution in biodiversity can be seen when joining the WWT, an organization that stresses the protection of wetlands and wild birds 
our youth can also join this organization to conserve, restore, create, and inspire everyone to value the wetlands. But that is not it. Sunny, please elaborate more. Thank you, Jade. The youth are the future leaders of the world. Hence, we should take on practical actions to protect the world we live in. We can promote environmental diplomacy by participating in the youth organizations. For example, Key Club is an international student league organization. Every year, they host Art Day events on how to conserve energy. On that day, students around the world will plant trees to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and to provide home for biodiversity. Besides from participating in the youth organizations, we can also take on the challenges directly. For example, two teenagers found out that planting jotropa is better than planting biofuel, tobacco, because it is a natural resource. As a result, they co-founded Project Jotropa to teach farmers how to farm eco-friendly by using the seed of jotropa. From these two examples, we can see that when youth take actions, we can promote environmental diplomacy. Next, my team may elaborate more. Yvette, please. Thank you, Sunny. We know that having young people take practical actions is a prerequisite to counter problems head front. However, we believe that young people should go one step further to raise public awareness so other people can follow up our steps. In September this year, 700 young people from 150 different countries gathered together at the first ever UN Youth Climate Summit. They not only presented proposals to world leaders, but also exchanged ideas to acknowledge alternative solutions. Not only that, raising public awareness is something that we can also do in our daily lives, such as submitting news articles for publication, creating flyers that highlight specific environmental problems, or collaborate with young people from different countries to set up a website to educate people on how to reduce carbon emissions internationally. By doing so, we show the adults that we are young but united, and we are ready to take the lead. Back to you, Aiden. Thank you, Yvette. To conclude, there are many ways in which young people can promote environmental diplomacy. By taking practical actions, we involve ourselves in global issues by joining international organizations or seeking solutions ourselves. By raising awareness, we get to stand on the international podium and elevate the youth's influence throughout the world. With our constant, constant efforts, we can strive to make the youth valuable members of the earth we all have in common. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good day. Environmental diplomacy is any problem or risk that negatively affects the global community and environment possibly leading to disaster, including environmental issues, political crisis, social issues, and economic crisis. Usually, solutions to environmental diplomacy generally require cooperation among nations. Taiwan, a young democracy, yearns to be a nation, but is not recognized as one by most of the world. Nevertheless, persistent we must be. Here are some global issues to watch. Today our focus is on climate change. In the next five minutes, let me introduce my teammates to go into details to define what impact does the environmental diplomacy have on the youth of Taiwan. First, Rachel and Wendy will analyze what is environmental diplomacy. 
and Jimmy will conclude all of our examples into a solution. To start us off, Rachel, what do you think? Thanks for your introduction. I think in order for us to promote, to know how can we promote Taiwan's environmental diplomacy, we shall first understand a serious global issue, climate change. Climate change reality takes hold, from flooding to fires. Climate change wreaks havoc on people's health and livelihood around the globe. In October, the world was warned that the greenhouse gas emission must be reduced within the next 12 years to stay within 1.5 degrees Celsius. While countries made progress late last year on the rules governing the Paris Agreement, global emission continued to rise making clear the need for enhanced climate action by 2020. So what is the extreme weather event? That's a good point. The increasing frequency of extreme weather events caused by global warming endanger Taiwan's environment and survival. Taiwan's average temperature in the past two years has been the highest in 100 years. A typical heat wave has been causing water shortage, damaging the economy, certain people's welfare, and restricting the generation of hydroelectric power, which truly affect our life. To make matters worse, just this August, southern torrential rains from tropical depression caused severe flooding across southern Taiwan, seriously impacting people's life and damaging the infrastructure and property. Thank you, Rachel. In my opinion, I think that one of the most important skills needed for the youth of Taiwan is to take care about the environmental diplomacy right now. Taiwan's lack of access to United Nations meetings and exclusion from the international response structure have weakened our ability to adapt to the challenges posed by global warming and climate change. There is an urgent need for Taiwan to be included in early warning system for disasters, gain access to real-time information, and contribute more to global climate change adaptation mechanisms. When we tell people that we're from Taiwan, we're often met with positive looks and blank stares. So this is what we're here to tell you about Taiwan's advantages in environmental diplomacy. Jimmy, what do you think? You're right, Wendy. But Taiwan's exclusion from the UN will make it difficult for Taiwan to offset the high economic cost of carbon reduction measures. This could seriously harm the competitive edge of Taiwan's industries and discourage them from helping the government develop green industrial structure. Almost all World Trade Organization members are contracting parties to the Paris Agreement. However, Taiwan, a WTO member, remains excluded. We, as a young diplomat, have been striving for the opportunity of cooperation between other nations and organizations to secure Taiwan's environment. Taiwan, like many other countries, should be afforded the opportunity to participate in global mechanisms, negotiations, and activities that promote the implementation of the Paris Agreement. Therefore, we call on all parties, all parties to look beyond political considerations to support Taiwan's pragmatic, professional, <coughs> and constructive participation. So let us, as a young diplomats, to help in global efforts to promote environmental diplomacy. So guys, I, I believe we have, no, actually, we believe we have done enough to promote environmental diplomacy. Right, guys? Yes! I believe so. One, two, Thank you. you. One, two. Good afternoon. 
The advancement of science and technology leads to the rapid development of human social activities. Mass production, mass consumption, and mass abandonment result in environmental pollution and sharp decline in resources. This also endangers the sustainable development of human beings. Therefore, people recognize that economic development and environmental issues are inseparable. In order to improve the global environment, the concept of sustainable development can provide solutions to the dilemma. In 1972, Committee on Environment and Development published Our Common Future and developed a series of sustainable development goals that are still issues for the future. Besides, since the 1992 Earth Summit in Brazil, the United Nations has begun to require member states to formulate a sustainable development strategy, so-called Agenda 21st, passing resolutions including these issues like biodiversity, the ozone layer, and climate change. Under the global changes, environmental diplomacy should aim at saving the planet. Therefore, Taiwan can adopt the following strategies to promote environmental diplomacy. As for canceling foreign deaths for nature, Central and South America is a center of struggling for natural movements. In addition, Central and South America is home to cultural diversity and biodiversity, such as Maya culture and the Amazon basin. Thus, the concept of canceling foreign deaths in exchange for culture and nature has arisen. Taiwan can also follow this model to cancel foreign deaths of partner countries inviting them to safeguard the natural ecology of the earth. The exchange between the civil society and not United Nations member states is the creation of United NGOs. On the one hand, Taiwan offers the power and platform to NGOs. On the other hand, Taiwan develops civil diplomacy, working with the third sectors. The comprehensive campaign will strive for more natural ecological regions accumulating the natural capital. Therefore, we can change our diplomacy into green diplomacy. Moreover, we have organized international teams in United NGOs to help solve the problem of rising sea levels, rescuing island countries with diplomatic relations. Indeed, Taiwan really has made a concrete contribution to the global environment. With the urgent demand for green electricity in recent years, Taiwan relatively has conditions and environment for developing green energy technology. This also prompts the government to accelerate the discovery of the renewable energy. For instance, Taiwan actively develops solar energy, wind energy, and geothermal energy Especially Taiwan has steadily become the top-ranking country of solar panel production in the world. Circular economy is an important policy for President Tsai. How to effectively achieve the sustainability of resource recovery lies in circular economy. Through the reuse of the green energy resources, the resource life cycle is extended. Besides, we can adopt cradle-to-cradle -cradle economic design to effectively alleviate the problem of waste and pollution. Finally, the industrial development will turn linear economy into circular economy with sustainable resources. Ecology writer John C. promotes this idea, thinking like a mountain, According to this idea, people in Taiwan should think like an island and restore the name of Formosa. Therefore, people should accumulate natural and cultural capital, playing a significant role. Sustainable Taiwan is the sustainable earth. Young people should make good use of the most powerful NGOs in the international society, incorporating the power of the government into the environment through economic, trade, academic, and cultural forces. Taiwanese international participation 
depends on the support and understanding from all countries by playing a more active role in the international affairs Taiwan will not be ignored thank you第十七队，请上台。计时开始。Environmental diplomacy is defined as a diplomatic field of protection and management of climate, resources, and environment. Nowadays, companies and Taiwanese government all work hard to promote environmental diplomacy. However, I think teenagers should be the first line. There are many ways for young people to promote environmental diplomacy. Here are three examples. First, use social media and spread it to the world. Second, Join environmental protection activities. Third, practice sustainable development. Nowadays, social media is a convenient way to connect with international people. We teenagers can practice the environmental diplomacy through this way. For instance, every year, our government subsidizes people who put up solar panels on the roof of their house in order to promote renewable energy generation. By doing so, solar power energy will be used, will be used widely and cut down the greenhouse gas emissions that made from coal power plants. The above mention can uh, achieve the goal of decreasing carbon dioxide. And we teenagers can, can share the achievement on the social media to, the, to all over the world. And next, let's, let's talk about another example. Another good example is Huang Ziyang. He once saw lots of plastic items in the ocean and on the beaches. Therefore, he started to pick up this littering and created an online platform on Facebook named Rethink. Rethink is an activity encourages people to clean up the beautiful ocean and beaches. After that, people around the world soon followed his example. I also joined his Rethink activity before. In the activity, tons of plastic bags, plastic bottles, and plastic straws were on the beach. Moreover, there were many sea creatures killed because of plastics in their body. We really have to protect the environment before it's too late. Fortunately, Rethink has become a non-government organization this year and has cooperated with companies such as Google and Pokemon Go. This will make more and more people join the beach cleaning. We teenagers can learn from the experiences of Huang Ziyang, save our precious earth and practice the spirit of environmental diplomacy. We, teenagers, can promote our ecological, sustainable agricultural technique to practice the environmental diplomacy. Our Ali Mountain Tea is known worldwide for its ecological sustainability. After the big disaster, the young teen farmers decided to use ecological sustainability. They are turning to wild and natural farming. They don't apply fertilizer nor use pesticides because they believe that if they treat the land well, nature will reward them generously. Thus, some new southbound policy countries were appealed. In 2019, Indonesia and Taiwan signed an agreement aiming to promote Indonesian ag agriculture. And Indonesia planned to send 300 young, 300 young farmers each year to 
to learn to, to Taiwan to learn the agricultural technique. If we can let our young farmers in Ali Mountain to introduce their ecological sustainable mountain tea experience, we can purely practice the win-win situation on environmental diplomacy. As an old saying goes, the longest journey began with a single step. We believe our first step is including our three examples. By using social media to tell everyone the importance of environmental diplomacy, by setting up the platform to join people around the world to practice the environmental production, or even by promoting our ecological, sustainable agricultural technique to the countries who need help. This is all we teenagers can do. In a word, Taiwan, we teenagers can practice the spirit of environmental diplomacy. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Good afternoon. Environmental issues now connected every nation more than ever before. On one hand, country overuse, including coal and petroleum. The global greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide, generated by them and accumulate in the atmosphere, which caused the global warming that also influenced Taiwanese use. But on the other hand, we can learn and cooperate with other countries. Take the Montreal Protocol, for example. 191 nations work together and successfully reduce 95% of chlorofluorocarbon use. We are the new generation. We are the go-getters of tomorrow. If we don't change the world, who will? Despite still being teenagers, it is our responsibility to look for new and better methods of changing the world. We all live on this island, and I'm sure we all love this island. Environmental diplomacy isn't only the duty of government, but also everyone. And that is the key. Next, Kenny will elaborate. Thank you, Miles. Although Taiwan couldn't participate in many environmental protection organizations, I believe that we can contrib contribute by making small changes in our daily lives and through the initiation of certain projects. This year, my classmates and I promoted a reduction movement in our high school. First of all, we launched a one-day ban on the single use of plastic. And we asked everyone to bring their plastic waste to school for recycling. We donated all the recovered money to a, to a charity. We hope that as long as we're willing to take more steps to solve the environmental problems, Taiwan will have a better place to stand on the international stage. In recent years, the Taiwanese government has struggled, campaigned, and lobbied just to get a seat at a table where these issues are being discussed. But we, we believe that if we teenagers, if we're willing to take more steps, we can have a win-win situation with the environment and make a world a better place. Next, Dana will elaborate. Thank you, Kenny. In addition to organizing awareness-raising activities, we can try to devote ourselves to becoming volunteers for some governmental or non-governmental organizations that aim for environmental improvement. To gain international recognition, Greta Thunberg, the 13-year-old brave Swedish girl, grabbed the attention of the world by going on a strike. Likewise, we as teenagers should start from ourselves 
we can hold mini speeches for teenagers all around the world to discuss about environmental issues. The reason for holding mini speeches is that such mini speeches have lower standard for everyone to take part in and can influence as many people as possible. And we may have the chance to broaden our horizon and strengthen our relationship. Here's Ethan to wrap it all up. Thank you, Dana. As the masters of our destiny, there is an abundance of things we can do to help protect our environment. For us, the most important part of all this is to have a determination to get out of our comfort zone and to take action in the ways we mentioned above. No matter to give mini speeches or to call for plastic reduction activities. Hopefully, our endeavors for solving environmental problems will be recognized internationally. We've been living in a comfortable world for too long, and it's time for us to give back to nature with such changes. Our future generation deserves a better environment. Thank you. Wow. 所以待会我们的益智问答绝对会非常的精彩好看希望大家加油喽在正式进入第三个环节益智问答之前呢我们要先请评审老师就刚才第二阶段同学们的表现做一个掌评让我们掌声欢迎木马素教授<笑> Professor Muscle Thank you. Thank you. Um, so they told me I have some time. I prepared a short list of uh, 3,562 points. Oh, OK. So it would take about 30 minutes? 30 minutes, okay. yes. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank the people who make this thing happen, such as the uh, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and uh, then behind those, we have a lot of uh, administrators and staff, the judges. Also, behind the scenes here are the camera people, the director, and uh, all the crew. Um, your teachers, who have helped you to get here, this competition and the previous ones. And also, I want to thank you for preparing so many good topics and teach me today something that I did not know. Last but not least, I want to thank our beautiful and kind thank you. <laughs> and Candy. Thank she also has so a very much. good voice, by the way. So give yourself a big hand, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Some some comments, I, I just list them uh, without going through it very um, detailed. Uh, first of all, um, in any kind of presentation, in any kind of uh, performance, enthusiasm is always important. So showing enthusiasm for your topic, showing enthusiasm for your audience, this enthusiasm always transfers. So how you show your enthusiasm, of course, is going to be in your body language, your vocal, Delivery, right? And also your in vocal delivery, we talk about intonation and so on. Among these, um, I really want to emphasize again on the importance of learning about enunciation versus pronunciation. So I think your teachers will tell you that, and you can also Google it. But work on your enunciation because it will, if your enunciation is good, people will forgive your pronunciation, and that's important. Um, so in all of that is about speaking naturally. 
I know it's very nervous. You know, I can't really feel how you feel when you're here because I've never been to any speech competition myself. And I cannot really imagine the things you do in here. So if you ask me to do this at this age, I would really be reluctant to participate in something like this. So it's very courageous and very admirable for you to do so. However, when you are here, you need to be natural, speak naturally, no matter how nervous you are. And so that natural speaking it, is the key to show that you have a grip uh, to the language. And so that, that helps. And the other thing is that do not assume, because you have researched this topic a lot, do not assume that we know, you know, the judges know everything about this topic. So do not try to cram in too many topics at the same time, rather than just presenting one or two points just very clearly and simply. Yeah, and that, that would help a lot, because uh, if you have too many points, it's going to be a little difficult for us to see what, whether to keep up with your per points or your, or your performance. And so another thing is the use of rap. Uh, I saw in the morning some group, one group used rap. I think that's really good. But especially, again, enunciation becomes very important. When you do use a rap, then also your enunciation, because we are testing your English, right? We are not testing your singing ability. So, so that was really an innovative thing, and I appreciate that. <coughs> So basically, uh, those are some of the things I wanted to mention to you. I, again, admire your, your courage. And I really appreciate giving all the information that I learned from you. I wish you keep up with this encouragement. Whether whatever happens today it doesn't matter. You just improved one step from your, for yourself, that you participate in such an important event and you have been able to go through it successfully. It's successful because nobody stood here and, and froze, right? There has been some times that people just came here and froze, oh, right? Really? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> no. This time, everybody is very, very well done. So, so thank you again. And one more big clap for everyone in this audience. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Professor. <laughs> oh. 木马苏教授非常的幽默，对不对？大家都非常的勇敢，没有人在这边有人吓昏了或者是激动都没有，所以表演的很好。但是重点就是，我觉得也听到了一些，不管就是做什么表演的种类的表演者，就是自然这件事情很重要。我知道大家其实都很紧张，但是呢，其实要很努力的把内容内化成自己，然后要比较自然的，不管是说话方式啊，或者是在表达手啊、手势啊、肢体语言，能够越自然的话，会让大家。觉得你更亲近，就不是只是一个，他也会跟着一起觉得，哦，有一点点紧张的感觉。好、哦、，OK， 好，接下来呢，我们要继续邀请到的教授是李正清教授为我们讲评，欢迎李教授。教授好 ，Thank you very much. Thank you. Why, dear contestants, I have to say congratulations to all of you. For doing marvelous jobs in your mini drama performance, and particularly the impromptu speech contests, I myself have served as a judge for about ten years, and I have to tell you very frankly, this team's performance is the best I've ever seen in the past ten years. You have done a wonderful job, very awesome, and great. Please give yourself a big hand for your performances. Okay. As a matter of fact, all of you have been selected out of 108 teams to be represented over here for this final competition, and that's great. It means you are just the somebody to represent the young generation here in our country for the futures. And uh, for that, Professor Mosley has just mentioned some comments. And I want to give you some more about just three basic suggestions for your future development. For example, what are you going to do after living over here? Going to the college? Going overseas to pursue advanced studies? I think that's the job you're supposed to do. So my three suggestions for you is, based on my observation about your vocabulary, 
enunciation. Professor Mao Zedong mentioned enunciation. It means yi yang dun chuo, not just international pronunciation. And that's important. Some of you would do a superb job, and some of you still have room for improvement. So first of all, I would suggest that you have to read intensively in the future. For example, from uh, all of the books, if you read intensively, you can try to find some vocabulary to empower yourself for the future presentation. And this kind of empowerment in your English proficiency is important for your future development academically or also your future careers in your lifetime. You have a long way to go. And uh, through intensive reading, you really can find and learn, number one, the polished vocabulary. Some of you did a very good job, and some of you need better vocabulary to represent your idea. Number two, accurate grammatical structures. Some of you I still find some kind of grammatical mistake, tiny mistake, and there's also decent expression for speech delivery. And also, uh, uh, proper style of speeches and writing. All this can be learned not just in your textbook, but something beyond the textbook for you to empower yourself in not only speaking, but also writing and also communication in what you did today over here. Number two, be sure to read extensively beyond your textbooks of English in school. For example, you can read some very inspiring books available to you in Taiwan, good magazines, and also online international news and article. I have been reading New York Times, Washington Post, USA Today, Financial Times every day. And from this kind of news information, good articles, editorials, I learned the vocabulary you mentioned this morning. I also learned important knowledge needed desperately for you to express yourself. And that's important. Don't be confined by your textbook. I'm sure your English teacher will encourage you to read extensively for this purpose. And number three, uh, through this kind of extensive reading, you can find new expression. For example, I mean, some of you mentioned social media, disinformation, fake news, live stream, zhibo, talent development, yu, environmental diplomacy, and a negotiation sponsored by the United Nations, UNESCO, focus on the so-called environmental diplomacy and negotiation. I'm sorry, none of you mentioned negotiation beyond the, uh, uh, the this kind of, uh, environmental diplomacy. Uh, in your presentation today. But if you read extensively online, you can find all this kind of very important, useful information, not only for your future competition, but for your self-development in the future. And finally, be sure to try to listen to news broadcasts to improve your enunciation, Professor Marcel mentioned. I would suggest that you can go to the good TED program through which you can learn a lot of good expression, good knowledge, and also selected good YouTube material provided or advised by your teachers. All of this will help you to learn more. Today, when I heard about your presentation, particularly in the impromptu speech, some of you did extremely wonderful job. For example, one of the team mentioned that we have a lot of collected data from Solomon Islands, and you specify the facts and the reality, such as global warming, climate change, WHO in relation to economic development worldwide, and the three, uh, 330 countries participate in the conferences, marine uh, conservation in Asia, and so forth. In the meantime, I heard so many of you mentioning TWYCC, but you didn't mention what is TWYCC. Actually, it means Taiwan Youth Climate Coalition. 
However, this organization is limited just inside Taiwan. How about going beyond to contact the outside world? For example, participated in the youth, in the International Youth Summit program, model UN for the young generation. Uh, uh, and go out to learn something more in participating in more activities. And finally, it is important. Let us learn to speak, give a speech over here. All of you have to learn to write properly after reading intensively and extensively and express your view by submitting your views, your point, opinion online to share with your friend, your counterpart, the teenagers all over the world. Many countries are offering this kind of program. Remember, I'm sorry to tell you that I did not hear anybody mentioning Greta Thunberg, the 16-year-old girl from Sweden, who actively participate and activate this kind of program of environmental uh, protection and diplomacy, creating attention of the whole world. And eventually, she has been chosen as a person of the year by Time magazine. Why don't you do that? Why don't you mention her? She should be the typical example of our young generation today over here. But anyway, congratulations for doing so, the, the, the performances so well. I wish you success, continuing success in the future for learning more and paving the good groundwork, not only for yourself, but for our country, the Republic of China and Taiwan. Good luck and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Li Jiaoshou. Thank you.教授对大家期望非常高希望从我们的这个生活当中就把听说读写的这一些能力其实都是日语俱增的具备好然后要非常海量海量的阅读然后如果把这些东西都都内化然后呢愿意去分享的话说不定十年之后你们也可以被登上